Okay, here's the draw box, folks. So here we go. This is what democracy looks like. Okay, and you put it in the snack. And anybody can do this. Go vote. And now I get my sticker. Okay. Thank you so much. You Thank you. Yep. Now we're gonna do the red. Okay. I'll do the red and the So it might be kind of an exciting night uh, for some people, but I don't know. I mean, it's a very strange evening. You never know how people are going to react, how police departments might react to either demonstrations or protests tonight. So, but this is a historic night uh, in Seattle and all over the country. So I'm curious to see how it all comes out. It looks, you know, right now it's looking like Joe Biden has a good chance of of winning this election, so which has been cast by a lot of people in politics and media as a decision about whether we have democracy or fascism in this country. So we'll see what happens. This is a kind of a cool art piece I've always liked in South Lake Union. I'm just walking by the window and this is what it looks like when you walk by because it's sort of three-dimensional. But whoever came up with this is a cool idea. It's like a fun house in there. So, very cool. So Dan Rather tweeted out today, I took a course from him online, by the way, a journalism course, but he uh, tweeted out that people should just take it easy today, read a good book, read some poetry, go for a walk, try to not let the stress of the election get to you. And I was having a hard time with that earlier, especially when my whole you know, day has been wrapped up in doing media appearances uh, on the Tom Hartman show this morning, and then the Jeff Santos show later on tonight. He is broadcasting live from Madison, Wisconsin. And so I decided I, I need to take a walk. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going for a walk, it's election night. It's been a crazy four years, and I just cast my vote. I casted my vote. What is the plur What is the past tense of casting a vote? I just cast my vote, and now I'm just going for a walk to try to kind of get away from things a little bit. And it's a nice fall evening. The leaves are really beautiful along the ground where I'm walking, so. Seattle has a lot of really nice trees, and this time of year, some of them actually change color. Some of them. Most of them are not deciduous trees, they're evergreen trees, so they never change color. That's why it's called the Evergreen State. Well, for that reason, and also, some of my friends joke also because the Green Party is so popular here, and also because people love to smoke marijuana, and they've been smoking pot here for many years. It's now been legalized for the last few years, recreational pot, but uh, people were smoking it long before then. It was a part of the music culture here, part of the, the underground kind of hippie sort of bohemian culture. And it continues to be, although now it's actually legal, so you don't have to worry about the cops busting you for it. Uh, it's legal to have up to, I think, what, two ounces on you in Washington State. It's still supposedly illegal to grow it and sell it yourself, which is kind of ridiculous, but uh, someday. I mean, there are states where you can grow your own, or most of states that have legalized it allow you to grow a certain amount. But not Washington, because that was one of the compromises uh, gives to the Republicans in order to get legalization passed, or at least to get it regulated. Because after the people passed it, with Initiative 502, uh, it took the state about another year to get its act together and the, to get the Liquor Control Board to start regulating it and get the marijuana cannabis industry going, which is, you know, um, probably by now a multi-million dollar, if not multi-billion dollar industry. So there's a lot of money in it. And so, so there were some business people that I was talking to you that were saying, hey, it would sure be great if there was some kind of uh, 
cannabis tourism in Seattle because they would love to invest money, a lot of money apparently, because this guy was a multimillionaire, at least he owned million dollars, millions of dollars worth of property in Seattle and other cities around the country. But he said, yeah, he was more than willing to invest the money in that to open up, say like hot uh, hotels and things, but that the state just has not gotten around to allowing that yet. It's gonna take some more lobbying to get some of the more conservative folks, especially on the east side of the state, which are mostly Republican, to support that kind of thing. So here we go. Some more cool art in Seattle. I love these sculptures. Uh, this is, yeah, in South Lake Union. They're really cool. Beautiful sculptures. I don't know exactly what they're made of. Some kind of light and glass and metal, but pretty futuristic and cool looking. Very cool. So some public art in Seattle is actually cool. Believe it or not. That's outside of Sam's, actually. That's outside of Sam's. There's also another art piece I can show you here in a minute that I helped uh, that helps me put a video together. Actually, I used it as part of a video I did, a music video. So, there they are. They also reflect off the building, which is kind of cool over there. So that's actually not located over there. That's a reflection on the glass. I know it's hard to believe that, but this is actually where they're located. So, pretty cool. Sometimes public art works, man. It's really interesting. So pretty soon here, oh, watch out guy. This one was kind of interesting too. And this one you can actually get in the middle of. There I am. I don't know what happens when you press the button. I haven't tried it for a while. Oh hey, check it out, here we go. Take my picture. Very cool. That's very strange looking. Let's say no. Let's try a different one. That's cooler. Yeah, I like that one much better. really cool. And now I'm in, is what it says. So we're supposed to wait around to see what happens next, but it's getting kind of weird. <laughs> That's all right, that was kind of cool. Just this part is kind of cool and spooky at the same time. More art. This artist, as part of this uh, storefront Seattle artwork thing, which is really cool. And also, Jessica Hoffman has something here, too. Very interesting people. Kind of cool architecture. That's actually glass up there. Way high up there. Nice. All right, the producer for the Jeff Santa show on the Revolution Radio Network is going to be calling me soon, so I guess I better get back. But I wanted to show you all one other thing here, which I think is really cool. It's a really cool art piece that I used in a video I did called Ruby 3, which is based on the ZBS character Ruby, and the, it's a sci-fi private detective series. So I want to show you this, this is really cool. It's a very nice piece of art. Isn't that cool? 
looks so groovy. There's all sorts of interesting things going on in here, man. It's like some of these neurons all connected. And there's this strange sort of ventilator fan kind of sound right here, too. Check that out, that is so cool. So the images seem to change a lot. Whenever I come by, there's something different. That's a cool one. I just love it when the cover part is cool, or it's not just boring. There are so many public art uh, sculptures in this city because it's really fun to go out for a walk or something and have that kind of experience to see something that cool. And it's also helped me as an artist because I've used some of it for my own music videos. You know, giving full attribution, of course, so that people can follow up on this art exhibit. But And it's also cool that they give her credit because there have been some other... There's some other public art in Seattle where they don't give the artist credit. They just buy the art, apparently, from the artist and they use it for some kind of corporate building or real estate development or something and then they don't even tell you who the artist is. I've seen that several times and I think that's really a shame. I think you should never, you should never be able to just sell the, the name, I mean, into an anonymity, but it happens all the time with graphics art, graphic artists, graphic artists, uh, commercial artists. Uh, a lot of time their stuff is not credited. So there's a lot of really great photographers and illustrators and other people out there doing great work whose art doesn't get appreciated or doesn't get acknowledged because you see it in the commercials. Think of all the music that you listen to all the time, constantly, every day. Our, our, our world is surrounded, we're surrounded by music. So all of those musicians and producers and sound engineers and financiers and all the people that make that possible are doing that all the time, like every single day. And you don't know what's going on in the background to create all that music but there are a lot of really talented musicians and artists composers performers doing this stuff and corporations are making you know multi-billion dollars with these advertising campaigns and things but the artists don't get acknowledged you don't see at the end of the commercial and thanks to so and so for the music so kudos to all you people out there who are trying to uh, do work that you need to to survive to finance your creative pursuits. I know sometimes it's tough and you don't get the credit you deserve. These people are obviously kind of worried 
that there's going to be some kind of damage to businesses tonight. This is not the first uh, building I've seen like this tonight. So obviously, some businesses are really worried because they've covered their windows tonight. I even saw the local Goodwill with its windows closed. I don't know why anybody would damage a Goodwill, but anyway, I guess, you know, tensions are high. It's election night and people think that there's going to be some contentiousness with this election and some people acting out. So we'll see what happens. I'm headed back to the studio so that I can get on air with the Revolution Radio Network and Jeff Santos. So I expect Ron Kreider is going to be calling me any moment. And if I'm not ready to go, then I'm not holding up my part of the bargain, as they say. <laughs> Although he's, he's changed the time on me several times, but that's the way it is during elections. You never know. Thank you. 